distance, and midpoint. We're going to be doing this in three dimensions, but I want to start by talking about 2D versus 3D. I think it might help to just put it into context. So in 2D, what I mean by that is two dimensions. So something like, um, well, let's take a look. Let's say I do this in X and I do this in Y. Well, then I might have some numbers, maybe like one, two, three, something like that. Let's just say, and let's say I go one, two, three, something like this. Well, if I have two points, it could be any points. I could draw them wherever. Maybe I put it like at 1, 1. Maybe I put the other one at, I don't know, let's say 3, 3. Let's just say something like this. Well, then I can make a line that joins them. All right, so there we go. Boom. If I want to find the distance or the length of that line, there's a couple of ways of doing it. I mean, one of the ways is to use Pythagoras' theorem, which is actually what I'm going to remind you about. Remember this right here? This is from 2D geometry. This says that if you have some kind of triangle, so let's say I have any old triangle, well, it has to be a right angle triangle. Let's say I call this A and B, and I call the hypotenuse C. Hypotenuse is always the longest one. It's opposite to the 90 degrees. Well, Pythagoras' theorem says that C squared will be equal to A squared plus B squared. Okay, so it'll be the square root of the sum of the squares. So if you want to get C by itself, you take the square root. Okay, well in this case right here, if I want to find this distance, it maybe doesn't seem so obvious, but I can do a Pythagoras theorem here. Look, what if I go this way? And I go this way. I make myself a little triangle. This right here could be called delta Y, like the you know height, whatever that is. This here could be called delta X. Now, if you're looking at this specific example, it's like one, two, three. So this is two. This over here is two. I don't care so much about that. What I care more about is finding this distance here. So you see, in the same sort of terms like this, I can say, well, then the distance squared, whatever that thing will be here, this distance here, d, that distance squared will be equal to delta x squared plus delta y squared. All right, and if I want to get d by itself, then I would say that d is going to be technically plus or minus the square root, but we're going to say distances are positive. So it'll be a square root of delta x squared plus delta y squared. Now we can be a little bit more specific. If we say this, if we have this term here being like this first point is like everything with subscript one. So like x1, y1, we could call, this could be called x2, y2. In other words, we just have different versions just to keep it generic. So we don't care about the actual coordinates. We could then say that d equals, let's see, in this case right here, we could say, um, uh, well, we could say it's x1 minus x2, because that's the difference between them. That's a delta. That's what it means. Now you might wonder, don't I have to do x2 minus x1? Turns out it doesn't matter. If you subtract them, if they're positive or negative, and you square them, it undoes it. So it actually doesn't matter which one comes first, as long as you're consistent in both. But normally it would be written like this. So we could say, therefore, that the Pythagoras theorem in 2D between two points would be something like this. Okay, so this is sort of how we could look at it. That's in 2D. Now in 3D, it's much harder to draw. Okay, so I don't even bother trying to do it because I think it's so hard for me. I'm just, I'm lousy at drawing. So I'm not even going to bother. And we have like X, Y, and Z or Z coordinates. I don't know how to draw like this. That's why I like this one here. X mystery instead of Christmas. <laughs> y mystery is it? Ha, 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 ha. So let's actually go ahead and do the distance formula in 3D. And this is in your formula booklet. So the distance between two points is just going to be the Pythagoras form, formula. So just like what we just learned before here, Pythagoras in 3D. So do you notice we sort of got that D was equal to x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared? Well, if we go in 3D, we just have the z coordinates as well. So let's just write that down then. So that'll be, let's see here. Maybe I'll just move this little piece right here move it. So this is Pythagoras in 3D. You know what? Actually, that was not very good. I'll just leave it. Um, let's, actually, let's go ahead and just write it down. So this will be equal to, um, well, maybe I won't say equal to, I'll say it like this. I'll say D equals. Now, just like we said before, it'll be x1 minus x2 squared, uh, well, all that quantity squared, plus y1 minus y2 quantity squared, Plus, and we just have the z coordinate, so z1 minus z2. Oops, I just made it worse here. That's just how this equation looks. That's it. That's all you have to worry about here. We'll do the square root, of course. 
There we go. And this is in your formula booklet, which is great. So you don't have to memorize this at all. You just use it as you need to. What I want to do then is show you uh, about the midpoint. So if we have the we have a midpoint equation right here, um, and that'll be the halfway between two points. So let's just talk about 2D first just to get you thinking about it properly. So again with X's and Y's, here we go. And let's just say, I mean, it, it doesn't really matter what points they are, but I could pick like, I don't know, this is a one and two, this is a one and a two here. Just to have some examples here. Let's put in some points. Maybe I put a point here, maybe I put two, two here like this. So this right here could be my straight line again. And if I wanted the distance, we know how to do that now. But what about the midpoint? The midpoint is halfway between those two points. So in this case here, the midpoint would be exactly, well, at least if I drew it right, it would be exactly this. But the midpoint would be exactly halfway. So how would you find the midpoint? I mean, it's, it's half the x and it's half the y. Isn't that right? Like the, the x value is halfway between all the x's. So I'll say this. I'll say so maybe it's half the x, comma, half the y. Now, how do I do half the x? Well, what I could do is say I could do the two x's, so x1 plus x2. I'll take the average. That's by doing the add the 2 up and you divide by 2. And with the y's, I could do that as well. That's how you get halfway in there, right? So you add the 2 up, you divide it by 2. These would be the coordinates of the midpoint in two dimensions. But if I want it in 3D, then it's going to look almost identical, except I just do it with the third dimension. Do you see? So it's it's not nearly so hard as you might think. I'll call it, uh, yeah, I mean, they say coordinates of the midpoint. So it just goes like this. So it's x1 plus x2 over 2, comma, y1 plus y2 over 2. Those are two different y points and your two different z points, just like this. Boom. There's your equation again. That's on your formula booklet, so you don't have to memorize it, okay? You just have to know how to use it. Just know that it exists. So then let's go ahead and do a real example. Uh, like this in here, why was the geometry teacher late for work? <laughs> yes. Oh, I hate myself. Uh, so line segment L adjoins two points. Here are the coordinates. Good luck drawing that in 3D. I don't know how to do that. And M is called the midpoint. Okay. Well, we're supposed to find the length of segment L. Well, the length will just be the distance. So I'm going to use that distance formula. Remember that one in here? They want D equals, you know, I mean, if you really want to, you should technically, you know, on a test, you should actually write down the equation you're going to use. This tells the person marking it, maybe your teacher or the examiner, that you know what you're doing. It's not a bad idea to actually write out the equation because then you can show them that you know what you're doing. So let's go ahead and do that then. So I'm going to say fine. Then the distance then, the length will be, let's see. This, I could call this in your x1. This will be y1, this will be z1. This will then be x2, y2, z2. Because of that, then I'll say, let's see, x1 minus y1. So it'll, uh, sorry, x1 minus x2, I mean. So it'll be minus 1 minus 4, all that squared, plus, let's see, y1. So 0 minus 0, that'll be easy. Um, and then I got 3 minus minus 1, all that squared. All right, let's keep going then. What's minus one minus four? Well, that's minus five, isn't it? So minus five squared. Well, this is just zero, so that's easy. Um, and three minus minus one is the same thing as saying three plus one, so that's four squared. There we go. And if I keep going then, that's gonna be, let's see, it's gonna be the square root, well, it's negative five times negative five is just 25, so that's easy. Plus four squared, that's 16. And I have to take the square root of all that. All right. Um, now, it, it's a little bit harder to sort of know what to do here because if you just add up 25 plus 16, uh, what's that? That's 41, square root of that. And this doesn't give you a nice square root. So because of that, uh, you could just leave it. You could say, ah, this is my answer. So it all depends on if you want to do this. This is the exact answer. Or we could also say, so let me just do it with a calculator just to estimate. So I'll say, or approximately equal to, and I'll just open up my calculator and do the square root, let's see here, of uh, 41. So we'll do it to three significant figures, so 6.40 then. So I'll say, or 
6.40. That's also allowed. It all depends on if you want to use a calculator or not for it. If you can't use a calculator for it, then leave it as root 41. If you can, then just make it 6.40. Okay, midpoint. Well, midpoint, we use a very uh, similar idea, except we just use the midpoint formula. Remember, and that just goes x1 plus x2 over 2, comma, y1 plus y2 over 2, comma, and we have z1 plus z2 over 2. These are the coordinates here. So I'm going to use this. I'll call MP for like midpoint, right? The midpoint. Well, in this case, they actually called it M. Never mind. They actually called it M. So we'll say M equals this. Those are the coordinates. I just have to, again, do the substitution here. So M is going to be, let's see, it's going to be minus 1 plus 4. Maybe I'll just write them all out so you can see. But otherwise, you might be actually quick at doing this. 0 plus 0 over 2, because those are the Y's. And the Z's are 3 plus minus 1 over 2. All right, so let's do that. So that gives me, let's see, minus 1 plus 4. Uh, same thing as saying 4 minus 1, so that's 3. So it's 3 over 2. Then I got 0 plus 0 over 2 is just 0. And 3 plus negative 1, that's um, 2. 2 divided by 2 is just 1. So actually, I can say then that those are the coordinates of m. And this is the exact value, so there we go. If you really want to do this on a calculator, I guess you could say it's also 1.5, but I think this is this is the better way to do it. So there we go. This is how we can work with distance and midpoint in three dimensions. Now, why should you care about this? Well, this is helpful in everyday life, depending on what you're doing as a job, at least. If you have to build something, it helps to know distances in 3D. Architects, designers, we use this in navigation. So if you're going to actually get to know where you're going, you have to know about distances, uh, air travel, space travel, all sorts of stuff. So this can actually be important to you in everyday life. Otherwise, it's good to learn because you have it on your test. <laughs>